Hello, we've got more report cards to reveal about the Twins midseason grades. We're kind of at the midterm point, and we'll talk a little bit about their game today because we're doing pitchers, including Bailey Ober, who had a really nice game against the Oakland A's. Get ready, folks, to be locked on Twins. You are locked on Twins, your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Locked On Twins, your daily go-to destination for Minnesota Twins discourse and analysis and uh, partying and that kind of thing. Uh, I We're your hosts. I'm one of them, Dave Brown. I've been in the uh, Baseball Writers Association of America uh, for 12 years, and I've been a sports writer for about 25 covering baseball mostly in that period. And across cyberspace for me is Brandon Warren, and he's going to tell you about himself right now. So I enjoy – I'm a Pisces. I'm kidding. Uh, I am a baseball writer, podcaster. Been doing this for a little over a decade, actually about 15 years doing twin stuff. Been a twins consumer for over 30 years. So we've got some fun different angles to bring to you, but – uh, you can unfollow me on Twitter at Brandon underscore W-A-R-N-E. And I understand you can follow Dave while you're doing the same. Where where can they find you, Dave? On Twitter, uh, I'm at, at Answer Dave Brown. So at Answer Dave Brown. It's kind of a mouthful. but that's You what, are a mouthful. That, that's what you got to deal with to get me on social media. Because you probably won't find me other ways. I'm very Well, your, your old account got clapped and it's not coming back. It doesn't sound like, huh? No, it's a fun story for another day. But um, so we've been in our previous episode, we talked about uh, what grades we give the Minnesota Twins for most of their first half. We're not quite uh, the way to 81 games, not quite to the midway point, but it'll be in a couple of days or so. And the Twins won today and uh, a late, a late, a late, you know, Bailey Ober asked to get uh, one more grade in before we, we grade him for the first half, for the first half, if you will. And he pitched a gem, a complete game, 89 pitches against the Oakland A's in a 10-2 victory. So uh, that has something to do with uh, uh, not only his season, but how the the starting pitchers look as a whole. So we're definitely going to talk about that and Ober's first half overall. Uh, We gave uh, in the the first show about this, we we gave our our grades for the outfielders and the infielders. Today, we're going to talk about the starters the relievers, and hopefully, if we're timely enough, a coaching staff and front office grades, too. Um, By the way, let's uh, let's make sure to remember that this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use the code locked on MLB. It's all lowercase. It's all one word for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. So I get we'll let's start with Ober. Uh, Coming into his start on Saturday, I gave him a B minus, and I think I'll bump him up to a B because he did so well. The team needed, uh, basically, they needed a, a win uh, by a bunch of runs, and they needed the pitcher to go deep into the ball game, and they got both. And it's good timing for for that standpoint. I'd say overall, you know, Overs had most of his bad starts have been like against the Royals, and while those have to count too, yeah. uh, he, he's been um, very effective, and I think we've seen some growth from him. Uh, in, in this most recent full season of his, so uh, I, I'm giving Bailey over a, a Bailey over a, an 80 and a and a solid B for his first uh, half of the season. How hard was it for you to not say overall instead of overall, like even subconsciously? Uh, maybe a lot. I, I I don't know that I was about to trip up there, but I'm always about to trip up. So well, when we talk now, about now, I'm going to be thinking about it, Brandon. Thank you. When we talk about Scott Paddock, you'll probably do it then. Mm. Uh, there's some there's some numbers that absolutely jump off the page, and that's before you even consider that Ober threw a complete game. Which you know, there, there was a long time where people thought off the page. Jump yep, that Rocco was right. taking Ober out too early in starts back when he was coming off throwing you know 100 minor league innings. 89 pitches for a complete game obviously is a huge deal. 70 strikes, so a 70 to 19 split. 10 strikeouts, two earned runs, four hits, two home runs, both solo shots. But in 89 pitches, 23 swinging strikes. Absolutely fantastic afternoon. And while I usually 
wouldn't give a guy a huge bump for a one day start, especially a one like one single solitary start against an ace team that is 21 games under 500. I am going to give him a solid B because I think he's done enough in his non-royal starts to at least be okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, he's been fine, <laughs> but I still need to see more. But based on what he did today, more of that, please. And you will be moving up to an A minus B plus, uh, Mr. Ober. I don't expect uh, Bailey Ober's stats to be better than Pablo Lopez's at the end of the season. So, uh, but, you know, right now they kind of are, at least the, the results. Um, yeah. I know Pablo still uh, might have better, uh, you know, expected ERA and that kind of thing. And uh, we can get into Pablo Lopez right now. Um, but, oh, well, let's see here. Bailey Ober, you, so Fangraphs does live stats. Right. Um, so they have Ober's expected FIP at 390 and his FIP at 418 as of today. They don't have expected ERA. But – Pablo, 354 was his ex-ERA, 436 FIP, 347 ex-FIP. So what is that? Basically splitting the difference between the two? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's 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 really close. So it, it helps that I think Ober got that last start in a little bit. But, well, and, and, and Ober now with nine innings is ahead of Pablo by two innings in the same number of starts and by war – was ahead of Pablo by 0.2 coming into today, which is a rounding error if you are really honest about how war is kind of granular. Uh, I think your point about Ober maybe being a little better than him right now is is probably fair. Right. Although I would expect Pablo to get things together because, as we pointed out before, he went through a period last year where his results really didn't match uh, you know, his best effort or his, his, his best expected Correct. results. Correct. So um, hopefully for the twins, that's coming. Uh, you know, Lopez, I, I've got a, the 75 and a C. Uh, maybe you could, someone could grade him a little better than that with a C plus just because he's had some good starts as well, but uh, the results haven't been there. They've, uh, they've taken, Rocco's taken steps to maybe give him a little more time in between starts him and other pitchers in the rotation uh, because of the, the lack of off days. We're kind of in the, in the middle of a situation right now where the, the twins don't have a lot of time in between starts. And uh, I, I don't know if that's it. Uh, the results on his sweeper earlier in the season weren't, you know, last year that was kind of a breakthrough part of his game where uh, he, he was really making hay and he's not making as much hay uh, right now. And we need to make more hay. And hey, uh, you know, he's going to have more opportunities to do so. But uh, maybe you've thought a little bit more about uh, why Pablo's results aren't what we want yet. Yeah, it's a C for me as well. And what's difficult is how do you grade based on expected expected statistics? Because his ERA is 5.63, his X ERA is 3.54. That's more than two runs different. But at the end of the day, I think you still have to grade based on what happens on the field. Certainly, you look at what be expected was and kind of get a feel for lucky versus unlucky, but it's pretty hard for me to give someone with an ERA over five, anything better than a C or C minus the strikeouts are there. The walks are there uh, as far as not giving up walks, but too many homers. And one, you know, once the strand rate normalizes a bit, he's going to be fine. I mean, it may end up being more of a 4.00, 4.20 ERA rather than a three, five, three, six, which, you know, it, it, it will look worse, but at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's still a good big league pitcher and someone you're going to trust in October. Just the the blip on the radar screen is going to hurt his season numbers. So for now, I'll give him a C. But I fully expect that if we circle back in October and do these again, which I'm sure we will, that he would easily be in that something in the B's, if not an A minus. I still think that he's too good. He's too talented. He prepares too well. He keeps himself in the the right frame of mind to not turn things around. So I, I'm all in on him getting better and proving himself the rest of the way, but it's just not there right now. So I got to give him a C. Uh, the, the granular stuff on uh, Chris Paddock is uh, strange. He's, he's uh, thanks to a tip from a teammate, Cole Sands, he was able to put some more miles per hour, like one and change on his fastball. So he's throwing harder. Mm -hmm. um, 
still the results are more like a C minus. I gave him 60 out of 100 points in a C minus grade, not not as good as Pablo Lopez. And I feel sometimes like I might be giving him the benefit of the doubt too, that Paddock will yeah. be better, uh, that he'll be able to use that velocity and the difference between that and his other pitches to uh, change up, for example, to, uh, you know, get better results as we go. So uh, Paddock, I wouldn't say it's been disappointing. I think coming off, you know, his first full season after Tommy John, we're going to see some uh, imperfections and some inconsistencies. And that's where Paddock's at at this point. He's That's how most fourth or fifth starters are. And I, I don't know how much it matters because statistically, I don't know if it's significant, but over his career, June has been one of his worst months and he has gotten absolutely obliterated this month. And it's, it's just the fact of the matter. The peripherals are actually fairly reasonable. You know, eight strikeouts per nine, two walks per nine. You live with those it's, Few too many homers, but that's been his issue in the past. But it just seems like he's had trouble with damage control. And to me, that's where I kind of ding him. Because, again, I'm okay with the peripherals, a FIP of 424, a XFIP of 399. That's a perfectly decent third starter, fourth starter template. But he's got to be better at stopping the bleeding. And right now, he's not. So did I say C or C minus? I'm trying to remember. I think you said C minus. Well, I'm coming back to a C minus. So um, that's where I'm at with him. But again, there's plenty of room for improvement. And somebody pointed it out that on Fangrass, where you have uh, ERA minus expected ERA, that differential, the Twins have like three guys in the top 20. Paddock is one of them. Uh, Ober is one of them. And Lopez is one of them, if I'm not mistaken. And so the fact that people say, well, the starting pitching has to improve, statistically, there's pretty good proof that it should just in due time. Let's do one more. We've got two more guys. I've got Varland. I got some grades for Varland because even though he's in AAA right now, he's been up recently. And then we'll talk about Joe Ryan after the break. Uh, I, Varland, I give a D. Um, I, we're not going to give anybody Fs, but the, the results, you know, he's, he had a couple of decent appearances lately. And I think maybe that's the thing that's keeping me, from giving a, a worse grade. Uh, you know, he's obviously got still got things to work on uh, in the minor leagues. And I do wonder that eventually, is he going to be at least serving this team in a better capacity as a relief pitcher as a starter though, we can't be too happy with the results. No. And I got to go with D minus just because he has not thrown that much in relief up here. And when he did, it was, it was fine. I mean, he, he filled the role capably and the, Proof is in the pudding that he can be a, a capable big league reliever and possibly a really, really good one. But at some point you ask yourself, are you trying to jam a square peg into a round hole? And at the same time, too, in 26 innings, is it fair to grade him on his 2.08 homers per nine? Like, hmm. is that enough time to be like, geez, that's pretty bad? Or does it normalize in a few well, more innings? Down, yeah. Right. And I, based on this track record, I can't grade him with the idea that it will settle down unless there's a role change. And so it's a D minus for now, but if you told me that he was, let's say the third most important arm in this bullpen in October after Joe Duran and Griffin Jacks, I'd be like, well, uh, you know, that's means that Brock Stewart maybe didn't get back to where he needed to be or, or Hey Alcala faltered down the stretch or, you know, a few other things. Yeah. But I wouldn't be shocked. It wouldn't blow me away if you said that Louis Varland was one of their best relievers over the home stretch. So a D minus for now. And when I grade him in October, uh, I'll probably separate based on roles if he makes that switch, which again, I suspect may be coming in due time. Let's take our break. And then uh, when we come back, we'll talk about Joe Ryan and the bullpen. Passion, drive, and patience bring home the winning trophy and also keep your ride alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. Over 122 million, that's with an M, parts for your number one ride. You will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part will fit no matter what, or you get your money back because they're wanting you to burn rubber, not cash, with eBay Motors. So with all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that W. So keep your ride alive at ebaymotors.com. 
Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay's guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. And our friends over at Prize Picks want you to know that they are North America's largest DFS platform, easiest and most exciting way to play DFS too, because it's just you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than on two to six stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. If you are more of a risk taker, you can do the demon picks. Those are marked in red. They're a little trickier. They're a little scarier. They get your heart beating, but you can have a multiplier of up to times 100, which means if you put down 10 bucks, you could bring home, you could rake in a thousand. And then you might have to talk to our friends over at Tax Slayer. We'll talk about them a little later in the show. But if you are more cautious, you can do a goblin pick. Usually I think a goblins is a bad thing, a scary thing. But in this case, they're marked green. They're a little safer. They keep you in the green. They keep you getting those consistent victories. The payouts are lower, but the likelihood of extending your winning streak, much, much higher. But if you are into NHL, we are down to game seven, which is hard to believe. You can go check out different options for NHL betting and MLB. Every stat under the sun that you can imagine. Baseball is a stat heads paradise, and they have it for you. So you get to pick more than or less than. Again, it's two to six stat categories. And again, watch the winnings roll in. So download the app today. And enter the code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to a hundred bucks. They will match up to a hundred bucks. Use the code locked on MLB. That's all one word, that's all lowercase. And get that deposit match. Join prize picks today. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Now, Dave, before we dive into the next segment here, I do want to mention that if you're watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your television, all day and have to turn down the volume with all that shouting. We've got you covered with Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. And we never get louder than I am right now. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, news, and it's streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, which I highly recommend you check out. And that is from us, the Locked On Podcast Network, which is your team every day. Also, check out SiriusXM. You can find the Twins and the A's in the finale on Sunday. It's a 307 first pitch. It is going to be Pablo Lopez against Hollywood Hogan Harris. 307 again at the Coliseum. Download Sirius app, uh, SiriusXM app, or it's the SXM app. Search Twins. You'll find the hometown call with uh, Chris Atterbury and Danny Gladden. All right. I think I'm ready to hand over the reins to you, Mr. Dave. Oh, that's great. Yeah, uh, I, I like the, the wrestling going on at the, at the Coliseum. It's always fun when that happens. Joe Ryan has been, uh, we're saving the, the best pitcher for last year as far as the starters go. And he has been, I would say, polished is a good way to, to put how he's pitched this year. Mm -hmm. He's uh, made an, a definite improvement on his sweeper. Uh, his uh, four-seamer is better, too. He's not getting hurt as much with home runs as he was. Uh, I think his his traditional slider, as they separate them in stat cast, uh, still maybe uh, a bugaboo there for him. But his, his sweeper has been better. His splitter has been uh, – he doesn't throw it as much, but he's it's his, it's more refined. And his four-seamer, he hasn't thrown as many four-seam fastballs, but he's also more effective with them. He's done a great job of limiting uh, mistakes, keeping uh, inning – you know, bad innings for him is a stray home run that – yeah, a solo home run that goes over the fence. I mean, he's been everything that you want in a number one or number two starter, and he deserves the A so far for his midterm grade. No question about it. And when you think of him and his repertoire, it's like when one of those little kids comes to you and is like, pick a card, any card, and all five of them are just as likely for him to come after you with it. And that's what makes him, excuse me, I think as effective as he is, is that he can throw anything in any count, and he can locate it pretty well. And for the one time that someone squares him up and hits a homer, pretty much every start, uh, he gives up basically that stray home run, whether it's a solo or two-run shot. Um, otherwise, though, he's got hitters eating out of the palm of his hand. His fastball is moving exactly how he wants it to, exactly where he wants it to. And the secondaries are better than they were when he was that fastball, fastball, fastball guy who we thought may be the second coming of, you know, Jake Odorizzi. And I think he has taken on some of those categories or characteristics, which is ironic enough because he's coming from the Rays system, but not quite as many fly balls. Still, though, uh, 
hard to be anything but impressed with Joe Ryan and, and definitely worth an A and easily the MVP of this pitching staff so far. Well, this right, right. I haven't looked to see, to compare him to other pitchers in the American league to see, well, is he a likely all-star because that has to, that, right. that's people that's coming up on people's radar. You know, who, who do you think if you had one, I see this question a lot. If you had one twins player to pick for the all-star team, who would mm -hmm. you pick? Who's likely blah, 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 that kind of stuff. Uh, if I, you know, like, like you said, if I were to send one pitcher from the staff, it would be Joe. Uh, but I don't know if he's going to go. He's got a 313 ERA. Uh, you know, he, for, for whatever it's worth, Fangraphs War has him as tied for 20th among all MLB starters with Hunter Green, Logan Gilbert, and just ahead of Luis Heal, which I would not have expected him to be ahead of Heal, 1.9 to 1.8 again, splitting hairs on a very granular statistic. But also keep in mind that Heal got his butt kicked last time out, and that probably narrowed the gap. That probably did. So don't know if it's going to mean an all-star game for him or not. Um, I, I would say that's 50, 50 at this point. Uh, maybe by the, way, by the way, fun, fun brain teaser. Who do you think leads MLB in starting pitcher fan graphs war? Because I would have never guessed this name. Uh, is it crochet crochet second crochet well, Eric Fetty. crochet, Chris sale, Ranger Suarez, Cole Reagans, Tyler glass. Now Tariq Skubal, Christopher Sanchez, the newly extended Christopher mm. Sanchez, Logan Webb and Jack Flaherty, but that leaves who as number one? Think Tom, uh, think uh, Tom Sawyer, think Mark Twain, think. Oh, Jack Flaherty? Tanner Huck. Oh, Tanner Huck. How about that? Yeah. Is it Huck? 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 Tanner, Tanner Huck. Tanner By Huck? a half win. Three Tanner Huck. I don't know. I should know the answer to that question, but I don't know. Uh, the, the top 30 is incredible. Names like Jake Irvin, Matt Waldron, I mean, Seth Lugo, George Kirby, Eric Fetty. I mean, these guys being in the top 30 is – some of them are surprising. Maybe not Kirby, I guess, but um, Ronaldo Lopez, same deal. He's, it's been a strange year for – I mean, there, there's a lot of guys who aren't hitting at all, and there, there are some guys, like the very best players in the league, many of mm -hmm. whom happen to be on my fantasy team, are – like they're really into a group. But it's hard – it's also hard to find a lot of people having a good year right. hitting. Pitching right. wise, it's not that hard to find people with good ERAs. It's uh, there's there's lots of uh, folks out there, and you just named a bunch of them who are who have good ERAs and good secondary stats. And I, some of it is the the environment that we're in. I think it's a good environment for pitchers, but mm -hmm. not all of them are on the on the twin staff. So maybe we'll catch some of that in the second half. I don't know. Let's hope so. Um, all right. So overall for the starters, I give a C. It's a wide range of. Mm -hmm. you know, that's what I have. I got 73 as a grade and a C overall. Maybe Varlin's D is dragging that down too much, but uh, what about you? Do you have an overall? It's about the same. It's a, it's a C plus or, or C because the group in general, you know, you'd want to have more from them, but right. they've been healthy. They've been durable and they've done more good than bad, which again, you know, you, you lose Ken to Maeda, who's not been very good. You lose Sonny Gray, who's been, pretty dang good. Again, it cuts all different ways. Ideally, the Twins would have one more starter. By the way, the trade deadline's about a month away. That could still happen. Uh, it's it's hard to love how, where they've been as starter, as a group, as a rotation, but it's not impossible to like the fact that they have some positive regression that seems to be coming. Uh, the, their best relief pitcher um, has been Griffin Jacks. Solid A, kind of like Ryan. Uh, yep. Very well could be an all-star. Uh, and we'll, and we'll see how that goes. Maybe, I don't know if he'll be the early all-star, but that, I mean, it could be something like that. It might be spread out in such a way that he is. Um, he's yep. just been terrific. He's been, it's always a surprise when Jax gives up a run or two. Um, and, you know, he's been, uh, when Duran wasn't the closer, he could do that. When he needed to come in the seventh or eighth inning, he can do that too. So Jax, his development, uh, definitely a success story for the Twins. Team high 35 appearances as well. He's been durable. He's been reliable. Nothing much more you can ask for out of a reliever. Easily the best reliever on the team this year. And an A, if I believed in A pluses, he'd have one. Uh, Duran has been there the whole time because of an injury suffered uh, early in the season. I'm giving him a B minus. His stats aren't very good, but I just don't believe them. I, I think, you know, he's, he's throwing 100, 101 miles an hour. He's uh, occasionally, he's, he's been given up. 
giving up a home run balls at bad times. And of course, when is it a good time when you're closer right. or eighth inning guys in the game, it's not good. I think he'll get it ironed out. I'm not, I'm not worried in the slightest about Duran, but he doesn't, he's also not pitching as well as he could. I'm giving him a solid C just because there has been enough of a, you know, doubt in my mind when he comes in where I am um, thinking like I, I vastly prefer Griffin Jacks at this point. And the stats obviously bear that out, but the homers are a little bit, alarming the homer per fly ball you know 26.7 that's crazy off the charts should normalize strand rate 65.4 percent should normalize babip is 214 that should normalize in a different way so i think it's all here for him to be pretty dang good again uh but i also can't just say hey i believe it's going to happen and so i have to grade based on that based on how he's pitched so far i think a c is fair if not maybe a little generous I think uh, Jorge Alcala gets a, a B for me. Uh, probably still too many blocks for my taste. And then there, there was a point kind of in the middle of the first half where he disappeared and he went to AAA and I don't know why. And they were using him for like two innings to start down there and whatever. Uh, but he, he gets a B for me. Uh, very good guy to go to in the middle innings. I'm giving him an A minus just because I'm grading him based on the fact that he's probably the best version of himself as a big leaguer to this point, he's come back from some pretty serious injuries. I would like there to be more strikeouts. I would like there to be maybe, I, I don't know about, definitely fewer walks and maybe maybe a little bit more of a ground ball tendency, but I don't know. He hasn't given up a home run yet in 25 and two-thirds, which is obviously very important because he's been throwing a lot of those leverage innings when guys are unavailable. You know, he's been kind of their ace in the hole that, um, you know, not quite Brock Stewart, but like, Brock Stewart 2.0. And so, yeah, I, I, I got to give him a little more credit than you do, but at the same time too, he's an imperfect reliever who is not striking out enough batters to walk as many as he is. And so I think fair is fair. It would, it, it's fun to think about the possibility of the playoff when Duran, Jax, Alcala and Stewart are all available at the same time. That's, that's really good stuff to throw at the opponent. Um, yes. Stewart, I give a, a, a B minus. Uh, maybe that's harsh. I don't know because he hasn't had a lot of innings, but he, he he sure looked like the best version of himself before his shoulder started barking. Yeah, I'd say B plus. Just a few too many walks, but otherwise everything's pretty much great there. And the great mystery now is when will he be back? Not not so much is he still alive because I think Do Young Park has answered that question quite well, but just – all right, what's next? And if they can get him healthy for the stretch run, then missing most of the season, not that big of a deal. But if this is going to be an injury that costs him the rest of the season, again, this is the nature of the beast with relievers who throw hard. It's a guy who's had arm issues, and it's not like they're paying him $10 million a year. So, again, it's, it shouldn't be a team-altering issue in the sense that, oh, it, you know, it cramped your budget and your bullpen. But it would be really great to see him again, and, and hopefully fairly soon. Uh, Cole Sands, uh, I get, I was going to give him a C plus, but I bumped him up to a B minus just for uh, him giving uh, extra miles per hour to his teammates uh, at, at no, uh, you know, at no charge. No added cost. Yeah. I, um, what I really like about him is that he is walking nobody. The home runs have not been much of an issue and his secondary numbers are very, very good. So his 4-5-0 ERA, you don't really love that, especially if you're like, whoa, why is he throwing the seventh inning of a two-run game when, you know, maybe Jax is down or, or whatever. But the, the peripherals and everything are there in place for him to be maybe even a force, not just a, a useful reliever, but a force. And so I'm all in on Cole Sands. All right. Well, before we get to the back half of the – or the front half of the bullpen and the back half of the show – Let's take a break. You got it. Life insurance is very important. It's vitally important, but you got to find the right policy. Make sure you have enough coverage. Make sure it covers all the right things and making sure that your family will be in good shape if you happen to uh, depart. So with Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies starting at $292 a year. That's less than a buck a day. You do not have to be a particularly good mathematician to figure that out. And you can get up to a hundred, a million, sorry, not a hundred million, a million dollars in coverage. Some of these options also will do same day approval. 
and you can avoid those doggone medical exams that obviously nobody likes. I have life insurance through a few different channels. Make sure that my family is covered in the event that something were to happen to me. If you're a parent, you know, you've had maybe have another kid, maybe, you know, you have a uh, different circumstances than when you got the policy. That means it's time to reevaluate. Hook yourself up with Policy Genius. They'll compare you with the, or they'll help you compare options at the top of the market. And they have no reason to recommend one or the other. So you know you're going to get the best possible advice. They're not incentivized to go with this one or that one based on kickbacks and that sort of thing. And thousands of five star reviews on Google and Trustpilot from customers who got the best fit for their needs tell you that this is a great, reputable place. So check life insurance off. Your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on MLB or click the link in the description below to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you can save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on MLB. And we got to pay the tax man to Tax Network USA wants you to know that the IRS can come after you any time of the year. And here at Locked On Twins, we pride ourselves in and <laughs> I almost started the old Brenneman thing. We pride ourselves and think of ourselves as a, a, a podcast of faith. But, hey, we're here to tell you about the offseason, the draft, spring training, playoffs, year-round. IRS is year-round, too. And if you need help with, with the IRS, who wants to take the IRS on alone? That's where Tax Network comes into play. Uh, the IRS can garnish your wages, levy your bank accounts, even seize your property. Don't let the IRS target you. Let the tax professionals and experts at Tax Network USA, go to bat for you. I know I've done a lot of work as an independent contractor, independent contractor, and I'm sure Dave has as well. And it's very important to make sure you have all your fares in order to make sure that you do not get a scary bill at the end of your tax appointment. And with over 14 years of experience and an A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau, Tax Network USA has saved their clients over a billion bucks in tax debt. Whether you owe taxes, have complicated taxes, or... You finally hit that parlay thanks to your friends at Prize Picks. You gotta, you gotta call these guys up and have them help you file things correctly. It's a hundred. It's one eight hundred, not one hundred eight hundred. One eight hundred five four nine one thousand. Or visit tnusa.com slash locked on. Or at the bottom of this episode, whether you're on YouTube or any of your favorite podcast platforms, we also have a, a tidy little link that you can click. But again, one eight hundred five four nine one thousand. tnusa.com slash locked on. Or click. The link below. We are near the end. We need <laughs> to finish up with the. Uh, Reminds me of the Homer Simpson. The end is near, where he's ringing the bell, wearing like a. Uh, what would you even call that? It's like a, a billboard, like a walking billboard. The end is near. The end. Yes. Is near. Ask me how. Yeah. Yep. Um. So how should we? Uh, I, I, Brandon, I think the. Uh, as much as we'd all like the twins at the trade deadline to add an excellent starting pitcher. And I think it would be yep. wise to do so. Right. I get the feeling that maybe that's not in the budget. I don't know what, why I get that feeling, but if, if it isn't, and the, the biggest, what, what, what are the other big decisions here? Like, uh, you know, another right-handed hitter in the outfield, I would say that's one and two, yep. are they comfortable with these lefties? Do they have the right lefty for the playoffs? And I'm not sure if they well, and, uh, and I think, too, if they don't attack the rotation with a top-end guy and they feel like their bullpen is strong, you could trade for somebody like a Paul Blackburn, like of that ilk, you know, someone who's a chain mover, number three, number four starter, and then just say, hey, we're going the Johnny Allstaff, the Johnny Holstaff approach in the playoffs, and we're going to try to beat you with uh, fireballers and our starters getting three innings or hmm. a, a trip through the order or two. That could be, and that hey, maybe we'll. That's where Louis Varlin will resurface right. in right. in that in that form. Um, but uh, it also would be nice to to have a functioning Caleb Field Bar. I, yeah, I would say that he, other than uh, Jay Jackson, has been the the biggest disappointment. And I, I I did not I did not give him a passing grade. Let's just put it like that. Yeah, uh, it's pretty hard to give him anything other than an F, just because of the. ERA in the sevens. It's almost a toll free number and that's just not going to work. Um, I don't know what the future looks like for him. There is a lot of things in his per peripheral profile that say, Hey, he should be better than this, but it's not enough 
to say, yeah, you know, you stick with this guy and you throw him in there in tough spots and let it ride. So I don't know what the answer is there, but I know my answer right now is a resounding F for Caleb Fieldbar and it stinks, but I can't do anything else. And they have about another five weeks or so until the trade deadline to decide if they need to make a big addition to uh, sort of brace themselves against uh, not having um, the right kind of left-hander when the, for the postseason. Cause I think everyone's going to be in the postseason race. That's not a question. Yeah. You need a right. Kind of, what what right do you do when you get there? Kind of left kind of righty. And that's tough to find. Steven Okert. Uh, I give a C Cody Funderburk, a D uh, those things, those grades could be interchanged by the, by the, uh, the second half. I, I'm not like, disappointed or impressed or depressed uh they they both need to do better that's about all i can say cody uh sorry okert is the most eh, i guess he's been on the team all year guy maybe on the entire roster and the fact that his i i don't like fan graphs war for relievers doesn't really tell you as much as you'd like he's zero he's been at zero he's had moments where he's gotten some fairly big outs he's had moments where he's struggled there's had there's been moments where you've been white knuckling it because he's gonna have to face a righty He's been basically a, a a guy on the roster, and so C minus for me. I just feel like he has maybe not done enough in the role that maybe he was being expected to fill. Now, with that said, I'm going to run over and uh, check the Marlins because I'm pretty sure he's still outperformed the guy who he was traded for, Mister uh, Mister Nick Gordon, who's been starting in left field. And Nick Gordon had a couple of home runs. I don't know about that. You're probably minus right. 0.4 Fangraphs War 69 weighted his runs created plus and the Woba of 265. But it's his expected Woba 275. He's not been it's good. Very, it's very wob wobbly and wobbly. Uh, all out, all out. Last last individual, uh, Josh Damon. I mean, other than being late for the season, not in the Carlos Santana sense, but uh, injuries prevented him from making the, the roster on opening day or not being ready, coming coming off surgery and whatever getting ready that's gone stalmont has gone as well as any of their off season it's not it's not high praise but as most of their off season you know other than like santana he's been terrific yeah for stalmont i give him a b plus because the peripherals aren't great but the fact that he's just back doing it again after thoracic outlet is a it's a yeah. big lift you know he's not hitting the 97 98 like he used to and maybe probably never will again and he's been pretty white knuckle too. You know, the game on Wednesday it was um, a rock of people. Pretty, it was a burning ring of fire that he managed to get out of, thanks to Austin Martin. So, yeah, I give him a B plus, but he gets a boost for just getting back. That's a huge deal. It's a huge dang deal. And he is capable of throwing his slider for strikes, yep. and, which is kind of an amazing talent in in, uh, in this day and age. It doesn't have to be, you know, if they go up there. And, not swinging at it, you know, if it's not in the zone, you've got problems. And sometimes he gets into trouble for that, but he can yeah. throw a slider for strikes and they, they don't know what to do with it. That's uh, something to look forward to maybe in the second half. Mm -hmm. No, I, I agree. I think Stelmont could do a lot of different, he could go a lot of different ways. Um, you know, he could be not a factor in October or he could be near the end of that bullpen. And neither of those would terribly surprise me. Overall, I give the bullpen a B. Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, there's been enough kind of uh, an, enough issues, you know, Duran being a negative war guy. Again, war for bullpen, I get it. It's not it's not good. But the, the, the components have not been there for a great reliever, and that drags down your grade. Even though Jax has been great, um, you know, it'd be nice to have more uh, Brock Stewart. But, yeah, I think uh, a B, B plus if you really want to be generous. I'm going to go B. Uh, you know, maybe a few too many homers, maybe a few too many guys who are not quite living up to their role. But in general, they've been OK. So we've got uh, that's our last. Uh, we, we don't really have time to go into coaching staff or front office. Maybe we'll do another show, a third grading show. Why don't we uh, why don't we add that as our final segment next time out? Sounds good. We'll do that. So a B for the bullpen. Yay. B -b -b bullpen. Hey. We'll be back uh, sometimes Sunday for. Uh, to wrap up the weekend series and to look ahead for next week for the twins. But for Brandon Warren, this is Dave Brown wishing you all a very pleasant good evening. And uh, we're going to see you tomorrow night.